with all that in mind, I decided that <clears throat> there was three key modifications that I was going to make. And those modifications were basically in um, safety or recovery capabilities, as well as storage or carrying capability. And so the three modifications that I very early on decided that I was going to make was a new or different front bumper, something other than the plastic front bumper that uh, the Jeeps come with OEM, or at least at the time came with OEM. And so I decided to put on an Aries um, aluminum front bumper, which increases my approach angle because it's not as low and it doesn't have that plastic underneath. So it increases my approach angle. I can actually get a little steeper up things. Um, and it needed to have a platform for a winch because if I get stuck somewhere and I'm by myself, I need to be able to get myself out of a tough spot like that. And so that's why my first choice for a big change to the vehicle was that front bumper. Uh, the next one was a roof rack. And I opted for a roof rack that was capable enough for me to actually stand on top, even with my gear on top. I wanted to be able to also stand on top. Obviously, I'm not going to stand on top when I'm driving. So the payload capability for the top rack needed to be high enough to accommodate my gear, plus high enough to accommodate my gear, plus myself. So another 150 pounds or so when it was stationary. That way I can actually, even with all my gear still on top without unpacking, I can actually get on top of that roof rack and I can take photos from the top of the roof, which is sometimes very handy to, to be able to do. And so the roof rack that I settled on was a roof rack uh, made by Gobi. It's called the uh, Gobi Stealth Rack. And one of the features of the Gobi is that it actually has pretty thick uh, tubes that go all the way down and bolt into the chassis. Uh, there's a bunch of roof racks that you know you drill into the roof on the Jeep or some that even connect to the gutter on the Jeep. But as a general rule, those roof racks will have much lower uh, load capabilities. Um, the last modification that I decided to make was the Jeep has very nice uh, and there were options, if I remember correctly, it has very nice uh, alloy or aluminum rims, 17-inch, with the uh, BF Goodrich uh, mud terrain tires that come uh, factory. I didn't mind the tires. They weren't too bad. They were a little slick at times. Uh, what I didn't like was the aluminum or the alloy wheels because the problem with an alloy wheel is that if if they get hit the wrong way, they very often break. They don't necessarily, I mean, they, they can dent, but a lot of times if you hit them bad enough, especially off-road with a rock where you slide into like the side of a rock, they may actually break. And once it breaks, it's pretty much done for. So now I would have to look at getting the spare tire, putting it on possibly on a dangerous uh, trail off-road. So... That's why I decided to forego the nice-looking rims, alloy rims, and went from 17-inch down to 16-inch. Um, and then I just put on some mud terrain tires that were both wider and slightly taller so that, you know, when you look at the total, the new tires, I went, so I went from 255... Um, I don't remember, 255, 75, 17, I believe it was, or somewhere in that area. And I re replaced them with um, 305, 70, 16s on uh, just bare bones, black steel rims. Uh, the reason for the steel rims, uh, if I get the ding in the steel rim, I can actually even use a hammer to bend it back into its position and usually that's good enough to get you off the trail. And then you can look at it once you get back home or once you get to a, 
uh, dealership or to a body shop, they can look at it and, you know, maybe you have to replace it. And if you do, they're pretty cheap. They're not as expensive as alloy wheels, of course. And they may not look as nice, but they're more practical. So in this case, I looked, I opted for um, function over form uh, for, the, for the wheels. The other nice advantage is that with the larger tires, because they are wider, they give me a slightly wider stance, which is nice because I have more weight on top of the roof when I am fully loaded. And so the wider stance gives me a little more uh, stability from a from a, a center of gravity perspective before I roll over. And then because they were slightly uh, taller, the rims being smaller, the tires being taller, and still fitting into the standard wheel wells without a lift, that allows me to actually t um, air down from what I used to do with the OEM tires where I went down to maybe 20, 22 at the lowest, I can actually go lower without fear of popping a bead. And um, usually I drive on normal trails, I usually drive 16 to 18. And I have been, I have gone down in like sandy areas in Utah, in the, in the desert. I have gone down to uh, 16 or 14 PSI even uh, without a problem. So those are things that, you know, you have to keep in mind. Now, on the flip side, the bad things about these, because of the roof rack, etc., you are adding weight, and when you add weight, uh, and the, the tires being wider and larger, they add more roll resistance. So with between the tires and the roof rack, I have essentially cut my fuel economy from about 17 to 18 miles to the gallon down to 14 to 16 miles to the gallon. So I'm definitely at least one mile per gallon lower than I used to be, one to two miles per gallon lower than I used to be. Uh, to me, that is an acceptable trade-off because of the added safety that I have having the front bumper with a winch, having the roof rack that not only holds all my camping gear, all my provisions, the non-spoilable provisions, but also my recovery gear, my max tracks are on there, my snatch strap, my tree saver, uh, shackles, all that stuff is on the roof, so it is easily accessible, and if I need it, I can easily get to it. Uh, the, the last thing that I'm contemplating is by going to the larger tires, and again, that is a flip side that you have to think about, and that is because I went to the larger tires, the spare tire, which on the on an OEM Jeep sits on the rear tailgate that opens up, and because it is uh, taller and wider, so it sticks out a little farther than the OEM tire because it's uh, broader, right? It's a 305 as opposed to a 255, which is the standard. So it's actually a little wider, which puts a little more weight away from the gate. And then because it's larger and with the steel rims also heavier, um, there's much more weight now on the rear tailgate and that could over the long term lead to a problem with the tailgate where the tailgate or the hinges of the tailgate might actually um, have issues or might fail. So my last modification that I'm planning on doing sometime in 2019 will be to reinforce the tailgate of the Jeep to get that tire on there uh, with uh, a steel plate between the tire and the, and the uh, gate and then have better hinges or more heavy-duty hinges on the tailgate so that the probability of a hinge failure or a gate failure gets minimized. Uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to go down the path of replacing the rear bumper at this time because I don't think it's necessary. I don't have other things that I need to carry around. And I will make a video uh, probably early in the spring once I get back into the season of doing some photo expeditions. I will go over my system of carrying my uh, camping gear, my tent, my provisions, the perishables, the non-perishables, and how I pack the Jeep when I go on a trip like that. It's actually a very easy uh, process because I have 
boxes that all the gear is in. And when I go on a trip, I just decide, you know, what can I take out of the box? What do I need to take into the box? Sometimes I, when I go by myself, I take my camp oven with me because I want to cook meals. Uh, if I go with other people, sometimes I go with a friend of mine who is also into photography and, you know, he is a big camp cook. He likes doing that. So in those cases, he takes the camp oven and I leave my camp oven home. Uh, I may take my water purification stuff, whereas he uh, either doesn't have the extent of water purification that I have or he has similar and so he can leave his home and then we kind of try to balance who takes what and basically just take the things that are necessary for the trip so that we again minimize our weight and minimize wear and tear on the vehicles so that's in a nutshell the reason what uh, why i modified my vehicle to essentially make it into a vehicle that is purpose-built for photo expeditions while still be reasonably okay for normal driving, you know.